Good morning and welcome back. Today we will draw three dimensional fragments using the elements of art called shape, line, and color. And one important new idea we will be using is a vanishing point. And you will see what that is as we work on the project. First, you'll need a pencil, a straight edge, and any kind of drawing surface. And if you don't have a straight edge, you can find any rigid material. I have some mail here from the Sam, so I can use the edge of this cardstock. And if you don't have any paper or a pad of paper, you can flatten an envelope and use that. And I will be drawing on this flattened envelope. If you don't have everything ready, feel free to press pause right now and gather your supplies. Once you've gathered your supplies, and your materials. Imagine a line going through the middle of your paper. And I already have this convenient fold for my envelope. You can fold your paper in half if you'd like. You can draw a light line going through your paper, or you can just imagine it. And on the top half of your paper, we'll be drawing our asymmetrical geometric shapes. And, um, and so you are gonna wanna make sure that that shape is a closed shape, which means none of your lines are intersecting. So take your straight edge and your pencil, and what you will do is, starting anywhere, make a line, and then from the end of each line, create another line. The bigger you make your shape filling that space, the more effective your 3D fragment will look. And feel free to go in and out. You're making jagged lines. Notice how I'm using my left hand to stabilize my ruler carefully as I draw my lines, and I'm just letting my imagination decide what direction my lines should go. There's no plan, it doesn't have to be perfect. Feel free to pause and erase. Your shape can look totally different from mine, of course. But creating corners and opportunities, because I'll need those corners in the next steps. So once you've finished that last line to create your closed shape, or if you need more time, you wanna press pause and finish your shape, we're gonna imagine our vanishing point, and we're gonna to wanna to place that vanishing point somewhere on the bottom half of our page. And I'm gonna go close to the bottom. So mine's gonna go right down here. And this point is important, because we use vanishing points and one point perspective and two point perspective and so on to help create the illusion of a three dimensional shape on a two dimensional surface. And we're gonna use this vanishing point and connect it to each corner of your shape using your straight edge. So take a moment now and make sure that your first corner lines up with your uh, straight edge and then you wanna move your straight edge so that it touches your vanishing point and make the adjustments so that both are lying along the same straight edge line. And then connect all your corners to your vanishing point. Now, I'm in a situation where I'm not sure what to do. I know that if I connect this corner with this vanishing point, my line's going to go through my shape. What do you think I can do? Let's think for a moment. I think I can do two things. I could draw and erase my line, so I could carefully draw my line connecting, and then erase it where it goes through my shape. And I know that if I draw too dark and this line isn't completely erased, when we add color, that will cover up the line as well. And I can even make this line a little bolder now that I know where it goes. Or on this corner, I'll connect the corner to the vanishing point and I'll just start and then stop where it hits the shape itself. So now I have the sense of overlapping, which is another tool we use to create a sense of depth, which helps create the sense of three dimensions on a two dimensional surface. Now, once you've created your shape and you've connected all your corners to your vanishing point, 
you're gonna wanna find a darker drawing material, like a marker, a Sharpie, a thick pen, anything that'll create a darker, bold outline. We're gonna go over all these lines with this pen to make all the lines stand out and look a little more bold. So pause the video and find a drawing material that's suitable to your liking. Once you have your material ready, you can use your straight edge and just go over all those lines carefully. Once you've gone over all your lines and created a nice bold outline, it's time to talk about color. We have several color sets and you'll want to pick a color set to add color to your shape. If we look at our clipboard here, we have our color wheel right here. One thing we already know is that red, yellow, and blue are our primary colors. And green, orange, and purple are our secondary colors. We know that we use our primary colors to create our secondary colors. And we know this because the secondary colors are between the primary colors that they are composed of. So blue and yellow make green, red and yellow make orange, and red and blue make purple or violet. Now there are some other color sets within the color wheel. We have warm colors and we have cool colors. And if you look carefully on the color wheel, a line goes through it that separates our warm colors from our cool colors. And if you look over here as well, I have my cool colors on one side and my warm colors on the other side. And our warm colors are composed of orange, red, and yellow. Our cool colors are blue, green, and purple. So you could think of using primary colors, secondary colors, warm colors, cool colors, and then one more color set, which we call complementary colors. And those are colors that are across each other on the color wheel. So blue, blue and orange are complements, purple and yellow are complements, and red and green are complements. And if you look over here, I have them directly across from each other as well. And complementary colors have a high contrast, which means when you put them together, together, it creates a very bold work of art. So you can choose to color your picture a primary color set, a secondary color set, maybe some warm colors, maybe some cool colors, or maybe some complementary colors. So feel free to pause the video and take a moment to choose or find colors that you can use to color your geometric fragment. Once you have selected your colors, and I'm gonna choose blue and orange as complements, you will use those to carefully color in your shape. Now, if you've noticed, on my shape, I've had two different coloring strategies. First of all, on the edges, I used my warm complementary color, the orange, but I colored a little lighter, and that way I could layer my blue on top of the orange to create the effect of a shadow. And then on the top part, I used my blue and I pressed harder for a bolder, richer color. Now, if you do this, you're going to want to make sure that you have some kind of pencil sharpener handy because it will wear down the end of your pencil. If you don't have a pencil sharpener, I recommend using the lighter strategy where you can layer multiple colors on top of one another without wearing down the end of your, your pencil. If you're using a pen, if you're using a marker, there are multiple other strategies you can explore to layer and create wonderful colors on your three-dimensional fragment. And that's how you use a vanishing point to create three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. Thanks for drawing with me, and I'll see you next time.